Daniel, how are you? I'm doing good, my man. How you doing? Hey, good. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. This is an honor. Well, uh, it's an honor to me. Thanks for the invitation and, and to let me be part of this uh, great event. Thanks. I appreciate it. Do you know that we've known each other now for 12 years? Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Actually, you're right. Wow. That's, that's we, awesome. So Daniel and I, Daniel and I used to work together back in uh, Guitar Center and Pro <laughs> Audio. That's competing right. to see who could sell the biggest sound system. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Some time ago, eh? <laughs> So I've got a couple questions. I've got a couple questions for you today, and then we're yeah. excited to hear you play a few more songs, and then we'll jump back into a, even more conversation. So, yeah. Um, you know, it's been a yeah, of course, a weird year. I'm sure you've heard this question a thousand times, but you know, I've seen you do some cool stuff this last year. How has this last year impacted you as an artist, and how have you adapted? Well, uh, when uh, I realized that the things were going to close down, you know, because uh, COVID, um, I was at the beginning a little scared because, you know, uh, that's this is what I do for a living in my family, in my tribe, basically, <laughs> how to bring food to my house. And, and the other thing I do is, is teaching music. So I, I was uh, putting more time into teaching so I have to adapt teaching virtually, which I'm still doing. So um, and um, all my students that went virtually and then I was doing some collaboration with the Lead Center to do uh, live concerts with other organizations, the Rascars Council, Minden House, Opera House. Doing, so a lot of uh, organizations uh, were reaching out to see to do some uh, collaboration. So to help each other, because we need music in our lives. So uh, I was blessed to, to keep working in music and teaching and helping others uh, as well. Yeah. Awesome. And, and when you teach, you teach at Union, but do you also do lessons for all ages? Yeah. Uh, I teach at Union, but also, you know, I teach privately to any ages. Uh, my youngest student at this point is uh, four years old. Um, but I, wow. Uh, yes, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's great. It, it's just adorable. And I think my oldest, I believe, uh, is around 70 something. So anyone deserves the opportunity to learn. So if I can help, might as well, let's do it. Yeah. That's awesome. Daniel, will you tell us a little bit about your songwriting process when you're putting a song together? How do you how do you go about doing that? Well, uh, that's a good question. Uh, one, one of the things I, I want to uh, do and, and try to express through my fingers is uh, how complex I want to make it. So hopefully to inspire other musicians. Um, at the same time, I want to uh, keep the idea of the melody but I, I like speed and sometimes I, I crank it up, you know, very fast. Uh, it's, I think it's in my uh, my Hispanic veins, you know, my blood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so at the same time, you know, some uh, uh, we need some balance. Uh, so what I like to do is uh, combine different kind of roots of melodies and information, uh, culture, uh, my country, where I'm from. Um, beads, African beads. So I like to incorporate many things, uh, and then it comes a song, and hopefully uh, people will, so, will enjoy. Go ahead. Oh, no doubt. Well, so I know that you have a good voice. Why <laughs> have you not actually sang on any recordings so far? Oh well, thanks for for. You know, your comments, I have a good voice. <laughs> uh, th well, that's a good... Uh, I feel like I need to uh, do something better for my voice. Uh, I, I, that's probably uh, 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 not a good excuse. Uh, but now that you're, you're mentioning, well, I will keep that in mind. And uh, maybe we can do something tonight. You know, I can sing something. Yeah, why not?
Um, I know that you have a band, don't you? Harana, right? Yeah, Tell me Harana. a little bit about the band. Well, Harana, we started in 2009, June 2009, and what Harana means is a Spanish verb that means party. But it's a different kind of party. It's a party that uh, if, if you go to any uh, uh, Hispanic countries, uh, it, we have uh, kind of the same idea here. There is always uh, in downtown, there's the center plaza and there is a water fountain, right? The, the entire city is built based on the uh, plaza. And what happens uh, when the city celebrates something, right? Uh, everyone goes to the center of the town, the center of the plaza. To, to celebrate, to uh, have music, have food, have kids playing around games. So the whole thing we call Harana. So that's what my band tries to bring together when we play. Um, and we have a different combination of music, uh, different uh, blended music. We have flamenco, we have rumba, we have Latin, we have Mexican music, we have African beats, so congas, timbales, kind of salsa, so a little New York in there too. So it's a mix. And what we love to do, putting together the whole thing, is just to have a big party. <laughs> so that's the idea we had on there. Tell us about this mm -hmm. instrument that you've got. Oh, so uh, this is a custom-made uh, instrument. I have a friend uh, that I asked him, uh, can you make this instrument? So uh, the bottom is a regular classical guitar. So um, uh, the top is uh, called charango. So uh, charango is the Incas guitar. In, in South America. So uh, the combination of these two uh, instruments we call uh, guitarrango. Guitarra is the name in Spanish of guitar. So charango, so we put those two words together, so we call guitarrango. Uh, this instrument right here, the top has 10 strings, and they are tuned in the key of A minor or C major, uh, and then the guitar, as we know. So that's the instrument. Awesome. And so, you know, it seems like Peruvian culture, Inca culture really bleeds into your music and your influence. Uh, can you tell me more about how that uh, affects your writing and your playing? Well, uh, it's, it's part of my ID, you know, it's part of my skin, it's part of my blood. So uh, one thing I, I want to bring uh, to my music is uh, going back to my roots, where I am from. And with that, uh, basically, where I am going after that. So where I'm from and where I'm going. And that's the idea that people will connect with my music. And with my music, uh, no matter if you don't have money or you don't have a passport, you're capable to travel mentally, emotionally. And at the end, you don't need borders because you can go free. That's it. I like that. <laughs> and so you've had the opportunity to tour South America. Tell me some like what was the best moment about touring uh, the countries in I think it's Northwest is kind of where you hit, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I went to um, here in the United States, you mean? Or, or in South America? No, South South America. Yeah. Oh, OK. So um, I went. Uh, to tour in Brazil uh, and around Peru I went to the Andes uh, different places uh, to the Amazon as well uh, and then I went to Ecuador um, Chile Bolivia and wow, everywhere uh, yeah so it was good it was in different years it was not the same tour but okay. uh, one of the things uh, I've I uh, basically keep in my mind is meeting people you know, I love meeting people and, and uh, share their experience and learn from them and hear their stories, um, uh, understand uh, their, their needs at the same time, uh, kind of see what I'm missing, you know, and uh, grab the information to put into my life and hopefully become a better human being. Um, Meeting the traditions, meeting their, uh, uh, eating their food, 
uh, which is the, as well kind of my food, you know, uh, and, and the idea learn uh, as much as I can from their culture. That's the, the main thing what I loved about touring. Yeah. Can you think of a specific moment in all of your touring, whether it's South America or North America, your favorite moment? Uh, my favorite moment, uh, I remember very well. Uh, I think it was in Puno, uh, which is uh, where is that Titicaca Lake. The, the lake is divided, basically split and for Bolivia and, and, and Peru. Uh, I was performing, and then this little girl, uh, two years old, uh, she came and with her tiny little voice, just came and hugged my leg. And <laughs> stay, hugged my leg, and she said, uh, thank you. That's, that's wow. what she said. And I almost uh, broke in tears, and what I just had, I just grabbed a CD and say, you know, this is for you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because uh, kids are so honest. You know, I have kids, right. and they put me put me in trouble many, many times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but they are so pure. You know, the purest sentiment, feeling, comes from them. They don't lie. They're gonna tell you what they feel, and for her to say that, it meant a lot. He meant a lot. Totally. So thinking about all of the shows that you've played, let's think about some shows that you've attended. What's the most memorable live show that you've ever seen? Uh, there were probably two. Well, one of my my dream, uh, you know, guitarist, Paco de Lucia. Um, oh, yeah. I, I watched him live in Montreal in 2008. 11 and I think it was 11 and then 2013 he passed away uh, so for me I just met him backstage he signed my guitar That's I was right. able to I remember yes I was able to talk to him it, I, and the, the worst thing is I couldn't ask a, a question like you're asking me right now right I didn't, <laughs> I didn't oh I didn't prepare for that that's one of my live, you know, uh, concert experience. And the other one I enjoy a lot uh, because it, it made me feel special, even though I was surrounded by thousands of people around, you know, in the arena was uh, hearing Coldplay. Oh, wow. it felt like, cool. It felt, it felt like the concert was meant for me. Uh, and that makes me feel like, wow, these guys are, are great. You know, that makes you feel special. Yeah. It was really cool to see uh, Chris played with Brittany Howard on the Grammys just last week. So that was that was a cool experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, what do you, you got? You got big plans for this next year? What What are your hopes for twenty twenty one? Uh, well, for this year, uh, I hope uh, you know uh, places will open up for we so we can play. Uh, I, I had just to got say, your I, vaccine, I, didn't you? I got it today. So I'm playing with my left arm totally in pain. Ooh. But you know, the show has to keep going. So I'm here. <laughs> so uh, I'm kind of tired. Before that, I just drink a, a very strong cup of coffee. And I, <laughs> you know, but you know, uh, we have to keep going. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so I feel I feel good, you know, seeing all these people, you know, uh, trying to get a vaccine. And I was so excited. Then I, I realized, oh, man, I have a concert tonight. I hope nothing happens to my left arm. So so far, it's been responding well. <laughs> good, good, good. So what I'm hoping for this, uh, the rest of this year is the um, we we as musicians, we need to share or, or, or we share our lives through music, through through chords. We share our experiences through uh, through our lyrics. So. Uh, I, I want people to to understand how hard it was for people to to the, bring arts into your life, and hopefully you can be very supportive this 2021, and things will uh, hoping hoping that things will open back, you know, for a better world. Yeah. 
We're super excited. I help out with the Hub and Soul series. We're excited to have you. I think you're playing in September. I think we've got the date. I probably need to email and confirm with you, but definitely going to have you on that bill. So looking forward to that. I am totally in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's International Women's History Month. Can you give us um, some names of some women, uh, both maybe nationally, internationally, uh, that inspire you or even personally? Uh, well, I have to mention two women. The one is being uh, with me almost my entire life, my mom. The reason why I mention her is because she is the one who gave me my first guitar. Um, she kind of forced me at the beginning, the first two weeks after <laughs> that. <laughs> after that, I was so in love with the instrument, and I basically she she gave me uh, the reason why I am alive now. You know, I, I believe in, in what I can breathe music and smile and be happy. And the second is my wife, um, because uh, she became uh, my rhythm, my right hand. So I can, uh, my rhythm is my heart. So she is the reason why I am, you know, doing every single second. I believe in love, I believe in acceptance, I believe in, in, in caring. So um, she, um, she knows my, 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 my life is music and she supports a lot by what I do. So those two women. Amazing. And your, your wife is Brazilian, correct? Amen. She's Brazilian, yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> So you mentioned that you've been you playing a little bossa nova. Is are any bossa nova or samba tunes in your future? Absolutely, yes. Uh, yes. Let's do that at the Hub Cafe. We're gonna do the Hub uh, concert Please. series. We're gonna do some bossa nova and some samba, yes. so people can start warming up. You know the hips. Yes, let's do yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe she's also a pretty good singer as well. Any plans for a family band? Um, that we thought we thought about it, and she said, "You know, no, you, you just do it. You, you, <laughs> you go to the lights. I, I will. <laughs> I will just watch you." But yes, uh, mm -hmm. at home when we get you know very intimate with my kids, she she likes to sing and I like to play. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, you have a a son that um, is autistic, and I know that you've been really big on. Um, supporting autism awareness. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, uh, my wife and I, we have three kids, uh, and the three of them, they have autism. Um, and, and that changed our lifestyle. That changed my lifestyle and music, too. So I, these days, I hardly tour now because I want to be close to them. Uh, but I realized that the music is one of their venues to express their feelings. And my wife is a very strong advocate to autism in, in the community. So she uh, decided to um, uh, open a nonprofit organization. And it's called uh, Bang Me Care. And what the idea of Bang Me Care is, uh, as her own experience, that she had to go to many appointments, uh, therapies, doctors, and all the stuff. So uh, moms uh, basically have to forget about their lives and take care of their own kids. And it's hard for, for women or for mothers or even single moms or, or even, you know, fathers or anyone in general, but mostly mo mothers, they, they take care of that. And she, in her own experience, she realized that I need to take care of myself in order to take care of my kids. So I had mm -hmm. to be healthy enough mentally, emotionally, so they can be health, healthy as well. So what she does is there is a lot of organizations that takes care of the kids, you know, uh, nonprofit organizations, Autism Family Network, uh, many, many. But there is no organization that takes care of the mothers. Wow. So what she does is she goes and she helps them out to, for example, there are different, different companies, organizations, um, business that they get together for example there's chiropractors so uh, moms they can get a massage they can 
you know, have uh, so fixing the back or whatever they have to do. They have doctors, so they have appointments. They uh, um, uh, nail salons. They just uh, basically donate their skills and they uh, uh, color their nails. Uh, everything they do it for free. All this business help the women to feel special. So that's the idea, because when she feels good, the kids will feel good. So totally. she, uh, yeah, so she does that and try to, uh, uh, you know, help uh, collaboration with other business. And actually, uh, next month, which is the month of uh, autism, you know, awareness. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. April is a big month. Uh, we call it the blue month, right? Um, she uh, finished writing her book. So, uh, oh. so on the end of April, she is going to do, uh, it's, in, it's in Portuguese, but it's going to be translated in Spanish and English very soon. Uh, but the idea is uh, telling her own story, how she experienced the news of having autistic kids and how she can help other women to be supported with her own experience and i'm not sure if i should say the title of the book but the idea is called blue hugs blue hugs okay and book. so yeah. can folks find more information about uh your wife's nonprofit? yes uh i think i should know the name uh should be beg me care spelled b-e-m uh me m-e care and i think it's lifestyle something dot org um, okay. and they can make donations as well. Uh, so, uh, we are just starting this, 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 um, this nonprofit organization. So we are new, she is new on this. And, uh, what I like to do is, uh, doing music, you know, uh, and, uh, bring to the community for a big party and uh, music is a good invitation to, to be connected, you know? So that one good way is so. I'm the husband who plays and sure, I'm going to do this, you know, to help her out and we collaborate awesome. each other. Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's what I like to do to help her out. And oh, that's she awesome, too. Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. Much, much love to your wife and your family. Uh, do you have any new music that you're planning on releasing soon? Have you been able to uh, record anything? I, I haven't recorded anything. Um, uh, it, it was a tough year, you know, uh, last no, I year get that. and this year. And uh, I was putting all my time and and, and uh, teaching with my student to my students. Mm -hmm. But I am I I want to to uh, do another recording, uh, hopefully with my band for another solo. Cool. And if that comes out, it will be probably next year. Yeah. Well, and we're excited. I mean, the songs that you've played tonight will be professionally mixed and mastered by Studio PH, and we'll hopefully get those online, and you'll be able to share those with the world too. So oh, excited that for that! Awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm lucky to to have these guys very talented, you know, helping me out with this all this connection, these mics. Yeah, thanks to them. Uh, one more time. Um, what are some places that people can find your music and follow you online? Well, uh, you can go to Instagram, uh, just uh, look for Daniel Martinez Music, my face, Facebook page, Daniel Martinez Music as well, um, my website, DanielMartinezMusic.com, and if I'm not, it's okay if I can, if you want to make donations or whatever, uh, you can go to Venmo, Daniel Martinez Music, Cash App, Daniel Martinez Music. So everything is about Daniel Martinez Music. So... Uh, <laughs> So, uh, and they can find me in there and YouTube as well. Um, uh, what else? Uh, that's kind of, you got uh, a new website too. It's looking sharp. It, it is. Um, yeah. so I, I'm excited to, to keep, you know, updating and, and bringing people, uh, you know, about my music so they can know more about it and, uh, you know, loving it, loving it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Daniel, for joining us.